All right, hello out there, and welcome to the Dixie Bell Paint Company main page on Facebook. My name is Cece. Um, I am a furniture artist at CC Restyled, and it's Sunday night at 8 p.m., so I am hopping on here to do a little bit of painting with you all. Um, tonight, I'm working on a set of end tables, as you can see right here. Um, only one of which I got the first coat on. I was in a little bit of a crunch this week, so that's fine. Um, we're just going to work on this one, and the other one I'll do just like it uh, later on. But anyways, um, what I want to do um, this evening is a little bit of blending, and I know that's um, kind of a subject of a lot of um, tutorials and live videos is blending. Um, for a couple of reasons. A, it's one of the most common questions that I get is, how do I blend? Why can't I blend? Why can't I figure it out? Help me. What do I need? What are some tips? So people, you know, it's not something you just watch a video and you pick it up in general. Most people don't watch one video and pick it up. It's one of those things that you kind of have to see and do over, like repetitively, in order to get the hang of it and the feel for it. So. Um, that's why you'll see, I know myself especially, I do plenty of blending videos, but this one, I like to kind of switch them up a little bit and make them a little bit different. So, um, not only are we doing, uh, we're doing an ombre blend from bottom to top on this end table, but we're going to be blending in some other colors, maybe some contrasting bright colors. Um, not to necessarily make the piece loud and obnoxious, but to accentuate some of the added details that I've, I've put on here and um, some of the curves. You can see these legs um, are, they're like X legs. They, they make an X and um, they've got these curvy details and all that stuff. So um, there's a lot of different ways to accentuate details on your furniture and um, just kind of blending in some um, unexpected colors or maybe even you know darker colors, lighter colors, whatever. Um, something different can help you to accentuate um, those characteristics of your furniture um, that make it unique. So if you're hopping on, say hello and let us know where you're tuning in from. Hey everybody. Um, I'll try to get to um, questions if I kind of see them when I turn around, um, kind of scroll for a second. But um, yes, practice makes perfect. No truer words were ever spoken. Um, but I like to paint on my videos, so I don't like to do a whole lot of scrolling and chatting and talking, so I apologize. I want everyone to um, say hello, and I appreciate you tuning in. Um, if you have questions that don't get answered, I'll go back later, and um, I'll get to those. Um, the moldings that I put on my tables are not Would You Bend. Um, they are actually resin molds that I created from Redesign with Prima um, um, silicone molds. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with my thing here. I mean, well, what's new? It wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't have a technical difficulty. So let me just fix this real quick so the screen stays up. And then we're going to get to painting. So we're going to start off with, there we go, there it goes. Okay, so we're going to start off with um, palmetto on the bottom. Palmetto, as you can see, my jar of palmetto has seen better days. It's even got a hole on top. So, um, that's cute. It was real cute when I tried to shake it the other day and I didn't realize the hole was on top and it went everywhere. But, you know, that's a sign of using your product is when it looks like this. But Palmetto is this beautiful, deep, jewel tone green. And I love it. And then we're also going to use, we're going to start off with some antebellum blue, which is this top blue, um, deep blue with a tealish kind of, of, of tint to it. Um, and I meant to bring more into the shop because this is about empty. So we're gonna mist with water all day long until we can get every little last drop out of this antebellum blue that we possibly can. And then once we run out for sure, then we're just gonna have to uh, move on. And uh, it's fine, we'll, we'll be able to make some progress on these with the, with the tiny amount of antebellum blue that we have left. See, there's some in the lid left. You can totally use that. It's totally usable. See? Uh, that's literally scraping the bottom of the barrel, you guys. But it's okay. You know what? Um, 
we'll do what we can. And I think we could at least get this drawer done in the antebellum blue. So why don't we, I was going to go ahead and start with the palmetto at the bottom and work my way up. But um, I think I'm going to go ahead and start on this drawer here since we have limited antebellum blue and I want to, um, um, I want to be able to make sure that we get, you know, some of the blue and some of the palmetto highlighted. I'm going to try to turn on this light above me because it's dark in here. Is that better? Oh, I think that's a little bit better. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and get going. Um, I have got my, um, we'll go ahead and start on the drawer with the antebellum blue. Make sure I got a Mr. Bottle. Let's see. Oh, I need to fill up my bottles here. Um, so I have got, for painting, for the painting of the palmetto and antebellum blue, I used a um, flat large. See how it fits these little legs perfectly? And then um, for my antebellum blue, I used another flat large. I'm, I've been loving my flat large and flat medium and flat small brushes lately. The flats are, the flats are my, my faves right now, my go-tos. Uh, although I love all the Dixie Bell synthetic brushes, they're amazing, but um, the flat ones got my heart right now, you know? So, okay, we're going to start out with our little tiny bit of antebellum blue we have left. Oh, we're good. We'll miss this with water and make it go a long way. That's the great thing about Dixie Bell paints is that um, if they're thicker than you're liking or if you're running out and you want to deny that truth all day long, mist your paint with water while you're painting and it'll help it go a lot further and it won't sacrifice the coverage either. I mean, unless you spray too much water, but we're not going to do that. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start painting on my draw face here. Um, my second coat, obviously you can see that I've got a first coat on there. Misty mist with some water. Make it go a long way. Reduce those uh, brush stroke occurrences, brush mark occurrences, and um, help the paint be workable a little bit longer so it can self-level. All right, yeah, I think we'll be good with the antebellum blue for at least one side of this bad boy, at least. Maybe even two or three. I don't know, we'll see. See what kind of magic we can work here with our um, empty antebellum blue. Sure, you get your drawer sides, underneath. When you're working with details like this, whether they're original to the piece or you added them like I added these, it makes, uh, <clears throat> it will save you some headache in the long run if you look at the details from different angles um, to make sure that you're not missing any uh, of the, you know, little nooks and crannies. You can think that you got it all until you look at it from the other side and realize that you missed a spot. Nobody likes to miss a spot and then be done and realize that you missed a spot and you have to Touch it up, reseal, blah, blah, blah. So just take the extra minute and look at it from all angles, top, bottom, left, right, and make sure you get your nooks and crannies there, okay? So I'm pretty confident I got those. So now is the fun part, okay? So I told you we're going to be blending in some, some different colors for fun. And I will show you what colors here in one second. Um, first, I'll show you what brushes I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to be using the Bell, I'm sorry, not the Bell, the French tip brush from Dixie Bell and the Bell brush from Dixie Bell. I just grab them all because depending on how it's going, I might want to switch back and forth. I don't know. They're pretty similar as you can see in shape, but the French tip is a little bit pointier. Um, and the bell brush is a little bit um, rounder or bigger around. So um, I really like the bell brush, brush bleh, the bell brush for blending. I like the bell brush for blending. I like the French tip for accenting things. Um, it's good for applying antiquing wax or color wax to details. It's just a perfect shape to get down in there um, and kind of feather out the wax. <clears throat> um, Lots of different uses for this guy here. So we got these handy. So the colors we're going to be blending in, we're going to do a little bit of Florida orange. 
What? Florida orange? Kudzu, this pretty green color. And, oh, I just saw somebody from Indiana. Hey, neighbor. And um, the Gulf, this pretty um, golfy kind of color. So these are the three colors we're gonna be kind of accent blending in, okay? We're not gonna get too carried away, but we're just gonna make them highlight um, where we want the eye to go on our piece, which is the details and the curves and the um, legs and the spindle, the crossbar. It's got some pretty little detail on there. So I'm gonna start with Florida orange. No, I'm gonna start with the golf. I'm gonna start with the golf. And, ooh, this almost empty too. I think I need to re-up on some of my paints here. But it's okay, we're not using much of the Gulf. I love this color. I wish I could paint way, I, would, I wish I could paint everything the Gulf. I mean, not everything, but a lot, of, a lot more than I use it. Because look how beautiful that color is. It's so happy. It's like, a, I call it Tiffany blue sometimes, because that's what it reminds me of. But the Gulf is a happy color. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. So um, <clears throat> um, we're going to go ahead and grab a French tip brush. And I'm going to kind of just dip my French tip brush in my golf. And then I'm going to kind of scrape it on the edges to get all the excess off. So it's not quite dry brushing, but a little, little heavier than dry brushing, we'll say. Okay. And I'm doing this while my paint is wet. Notice I'm not in a hurry. I don't need it to be like super, super duper wet, but I don't want it to be all the way dry. So somewhere kind of in between is good. Um, and I'm just gonna pick a corner. I kind of want to accent a corner. So I'm just gonna kind of paint this um, like angle here. Okay, and then, um, and then I'm gonna take my bell brush and I'm gonna kind of just blend that in, okay? So remember I said I want my paint kind of starting to dry, but not all the way dry? Well, it may have dried a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna give it another mist of water. It's kind of warm in here, so my paint dries really fast. Um, but we'll just give it a mist of water and that way it'll blend a little better. So we're just gonna blend it by just kind of giving it some strokes back and forth where the colors meet. Blend it in gently and a little bit more water. It is warm in here, folks. Make your paint dry real fast. All right. See how easy, just gentle strokes to blend that in, like nothing crazy. And um, if it's not quite bold enough for you, you can add more. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the golf because I love this color and I want to see more of it. Just in this kind of angle, I'm just kind of tracing the corner, really and rounding it off. Um, how do I know where to put the colors, you might ask yourself. Like, okay, I picked out my colors, I know what I want to accent it with, how do I know where to put it? So if you look at your piece, it's got corners, it's got angles, it's got details, it's got curves, it's got grooves. Um, you want to pick something, a characteristic of the piece that you want to highlight and accent that. So in this instance, I'm, I'm highlighting the corner. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and take my golf next and do this, this bottom corner right here to kind of balance out that corner. Let's go a little bit bigger on this, this corner here. My paint might be drying up. Gosh, this is drying fast. All right, maybe I should uh, work a little faster and talk a little bit less. So I like to accent corners, details, grooves, um, carvings, um, anything that just kind of you want to highlight that, that makes your piece interesting. Okay, so just a few little strokes following that line that I made. We'll blend that right in. Okay, easy peasy, just like that. And then I want to highlight a little bit on my moldings that I added. So let's see, I'm going to dip my brush in my The Gulf just one more time. 
And let's just go ahead and start kind of dabbing on um, some spots on our molding, kind of just like this. I'm not going to go over the whole thing because we still got kudzu and Florida orange left to go. So we got we to gotta save some room so those colors can play too. All right, we're just accenting um, with this color for now. Okay, so there's our golf little we just kind of pounce that on, pounce it on, and then we're just going to give it a little mist, and then we're going to just kind of blend it in, and when you're blending over details, the easiest way I've found to do that is just to kind of pounce, pounce it on, pounce it blended, or just kind of do some smaller circular motions like that, that works too. And I like to wipe the excess paint off my brush when I'm done. So if you see me wiping my brush off on my shop towel, that's why. Um, just so I don't muddy up my, my blend. Nice, clean, feathered out, blended, blendy blend. Okay? Okay, so now I'm going to go over my medallion. I'm just going to do some circular jobbies here to get those colors to blend together on the detail and just kind of clean it up a little bit. And then down here. All right, so just pounce, pounce, blendy blend. Easy peasy. Okay, so see how we just kind of highlighted a little, little bits of our details there? Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to, let's do kudzu next. We're going to do kudzu next, which is that pretty kind of clover green that I showed you. Um, right here. This is kudzu. Pretty, right? Um, pretty kudzu. Okay. I hope you all can see okay. This is the closest I can get with my tripod. There's a little bit closer. How's that? Better? Okay, <clears throat> awesome. So, um, let's see. Here we go. Okay, so kudzu is next. Um, da, 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 da. When I'm not using my brushes, I like to give them a little mist of water, and then I put them in a Ziploc bag so they don't get hard and crusty while I'm working with the other colors. So I'm doing that real quick. Okay. So kudzu is next, and we're going to grab another French tip brush and do a similar type thing. We're just going to lo load up a little bit of kudzu and then just kind of wipe the excess off on the side of our jar. So like I said, similar to dry brushing, but a little wetter than dry brushing, okay? It's like dry brushing 2.0, okay? So now we got to pick where do we want to do our kudzu. So I think what I'm going to do is where I accentuated the corners and details, I think I'm just going to kind of follow suit with my kudzu and almost kind of mimic, mimic where I put the golf, but with the kudzu. Does that make sense? So I'm not going to just randomly throw in, you can, you can just randomly throw in your color, but I kind of like to have a, um, uh, what's the word? Um, I like it to kind of make sense where I'm putting the colors, which means um, it's consistent across the whole piece. So wherever I put the golf, I'm just going to follow along it a little bit with the kudzu. Okay, so I'm not completely tracing the um, shape that I made with kudzu, but I'm more of kind of accenting the shape that I created with the, the golf. Did I say kudzu? I meant the golf. Um, I need to work faster and then talk less. So, so kind of just think of it as like I'm shadowing the golf. So if the golf is, you know, a shape, I'm just kind of creating a shadow that follows around the golf. See what I mean? So everywhere I got the golf, I'm just putting a little bit of the kudzu kind of right underneath it, like a shadow, okay? So does that, I hope that makes sense. Um, 
If it gives you some sort of um, reference point to know where to put your colors, um, just kind of remember, just like follow the leader. So wherever the golf goes, the kudzu's gonna follow him. Wherever kudzu goes, Florida Orange is gonna follow. Follow the leader, okay? So I'm gonna just kind of grab my brush and I'm gonna blendy blend in the kudzu just like I did with the golf, gently. And it's easier to add more color than it is to take it away, so um, don't go crazy. Just add a little bit, and if you think you need to add more, then you always can. Okay, so we're doing pretty good here. Just kind of pouncing that kudzu in so that it blends in just a little bit with the gulf and then blends in kind of with the um, antebellum blue background. So, here we go. I think I'm gonna grab my antebellum blue and I got a little bit of the kudzu down here where I kind of didn't want it. I'm just gonna grab my antebellum blue and kind of just go in and retouch up that little area right there. Maybe a little bit right here. Okay, and so where I just where I just added back my antebellum blue, then I just grab my brush and I just go blend those spots in gently. See, I only <clears throat> it only literally takes a couple little strokes to get colors like this to blend because they're so similar. You know, um, the blues and greens are not too far apart on a, on a color wheel or color chart, so um, it doesn't take a whole lot of motions to get them to blendy blend together. Okay, I'm going to give that one more squirt. And we're going to go on and move on to Florida Orange. So this is, we're bringing in Florida Orange, okay? So these colors are like the cool, chill, subtle, um, uh, you know, laid back kind of colors working together. And then the Florida Orange is going to be the life of the party. It's going to be like, hey, look at me. So we're going to take the Florida Orange. We're going to do the same thing, but we probably want to do a little bit less because the brighter or bolder the color is, the more it draws your eye. So these, you know, um, colors, you look at them and they look all nice and relaxed. Well, Florida Orange is like a, it's a lot bolder. So, so you want to use less, okay? It's not quite as soothing as the blues and the greens. So we're definitely gonna just be sparing, sparingly about our use of Florida orange, but isn't it so pretty? So my thought with the Florida orange is we are gonna do what I said, you know, how I kind of described it to you a minute ago, follow the leader. So wherever we put our kudzu, we're gonna put a little bit of Florida orange, but we're just going to do it a little more sparingly and we're gonna um, instead we're gonna do a little less of the blendy blend, and we're gonna do more of the pouncy pounce, because I want it to kind of almost look like it's like an ox oxidizing almost. I, I don't want to say I want it to look patinaed. I'm not gonna go there, but um, I do want it to have a little bit of an oxidized look. So that's what the Florida orange is gonna kind of do. I hope. I hope. See, I. I see these things in my mind and then I just try to make them work and usually they do, but not always. Not always. Um, you know, part of painting and designing and creating anything is um, part of the process is, is trying something and not succeeding. So trying something and failing miserably and it not turning out how you want it is just as important as doing something and it going perfectly. It might actually be more important to fail at something than it is to do it perfectly every single time. Because when you do it perfectly every single time, you don't really learn that much, but when you fail miserably and it's awful, you learn a lot from that. So don't be scared. If you have an idea in your brain, just try to make it happen. If it doesn't work out, it's just paint and you can paint right back over that bad boy. Okay, so we're just dabbing we're just dabbing, we're just dabbing a little bit of the Florida orange on top of the details. 
following along where um, where my um, where we did the kudzu. Okay, so that's maybe even kind of a lot. So I'm going to take my other blendy brush, the bell, and kind of blend in those edges a little a little bit. I I think I might have gone a little too much on the Florida orange. So we're going to pull back a little bit and do <clears throat> a little bit more concentrated areas of color as opposed to, you know, bigger areas of color. We're just going to um, have little concentrated dabs of the Florida orange. Um, kind of reminiscent of rust starting to happen on a patina, okay? So you know how when you look at something that's rusty, it's got those little crusty orange bits on top? That's kind of what my thought is with this Florida orange is that this could be the little crusty orange bits, okay? So remember we came around here with our other two colors and then down here with our other. So we're still going to do that with our Florida orange, but we're just going to be a little more gentle and a little more subtle, a little more, um, a little less, um, a little less than the other two colors. See what I'm saying? Even that might be just a little bit too much. So I'm going to just kind of blend in a little bit of that. When in doubt, blend it out, okay? And then, so we're, instead of creating those shapes with our brush like we did the other two colors, we're just kind of dabbing those shapes. So you kind of get the um, idea of the little angle shape that we had. And um, let's see. Picking out hairs from your brush. Sometimes that happens too. No big deal. Okay. So now we're going to come over on <clears throat> this side. And just like the other colors, we're getting a little bit of Florida orange on our brush and wiping it off on our, um, kind of scraping the excess off on our, um, the edge of our jar. So we're just going to kind of come up here a little bit. And follow our kudzu, follow the leader, remember? And then I'm just going to kind of blend that in a little bit, just dabbing it lightly with my bell brush. Lightly. Okay. Okay. And I like to just add some little more. Once it starts to kind of dry a little bit more, then um, it doesn't blend as much. So you can go in and add just a few little spots of the Florida orange that are uh, brighter than the other spots to kind of draw the eye and make it a little, a little bit more natural looking. Okay. Okay, so maybe just a little bit more right here, and then I think I'm going to put the brush down. Okay, don't overthink things like this. Um, and it's not rocket science. It's just playing and seeing what works to get the effect that you are going for. So I will, I'll show you a little bit closer here in a second when I'm kind of done playing here. Okay, no, nope, a little bit here, and then I'm putting the brush down, I promise. Okay. Boom. <clears throat> All right, so now I can show you a little bit closer. So see how you kind of get a little hint of like a patina or oxidization, oxidation, oxidized look, oxidation, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So uh, some oxidation happening there. And um, normally details like that, I'll go over with some gilding wax, like gold or copper or silver or whatever. Um, I think that on this, um, once it's all dry and sealed and all that, I might do like a, a little bit of a turquoise metallic or, or even green patina gilding wax. Dixie Bell has a green patina gilding wax. I think that it does not get enough credit and enough play. I'll tell you that right now. The green patina gilding wax from Dixie Bell, and I don't have one on me to show you because I'm just thinking of this right now, 
But um, <clears throat> the green patina wax from, from Dixie Belle is the bomb.com. And I don't see anyone use it near enough as they should. In fact, I think I'm the only person I've ever seen use it, but it's amazing. So it is a little canister of wax that is kind of like a dark green, looks a little dark green, you know, nothing super amazing, but you kind of dab it on, you know, your details or wherever you want to add your wax and it dries to a light green patina, rusty, crusty kind of look. So, um, it's super cool. If you haven't tried it, you should. Um, it's, it's way overlooked. I'm telling you, green patina gilding wax does not get enough play. So I don't know. That would be a good one on this piece to use. Um, but we'll see. We'll see when we get there. I don't know. I may not add anything to these details because I like, I like where we're going with them. I like how they're looking. They will need a little bit of something. So I will, I, I'll add something. But we'll cross that bridge when we get, to, when we get there. So. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in. I'm going to, nope, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna go ahead and take the drawer out. I always smash my finger when I do this. Okay, so after I get this drawer out without smashing my finger on the clip, I'm going to, um, ah, there we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna start from the bottom, I'm gonna, proceed from the bottom up. So we are going to, whoa, we are going to, going to um, start with our palm, palmetto and we're going to work our way from the bottom up and we're going to do a similar type thing that we did on our details but a little bit differently. A little more blendy blend, a little less pouncing because the pouncing was due to the details and trying to get in those little crevices. Um, the blue paint that I'm using is called Antebellum Blue. Sadly, my, I'm almost out here at the shop, so mm, I'm so sad. Um, the table almost matches my hair, yeah. I don't have any purple on the table, but pretty close. Um, let's see. Okay, so I just saw a couple questions, and I think they got answered. Oh, huh. I get the left-handed question a lot. So, no, we are not all left-handed. Yeah, the screen flips. Um, the screen flips uh, everything backwards. So, what you're looking at right now is backwards from reality. Is that mind-blowing? That's why my shirt says, oh, I'm not going to try to read it backwards. But it doesn't, or my apron is backwards. Everything's backwards. Um, but that way I can read the comments um, and get questions if I have time. All right, so we're going to move on to our palmetto with the hole in the top. That's kind of drying out, so we need to spray it with lots of water. Oh, boy. Nice and thick. I like my paint thick, though, so maybe we won't go crazy with the water. Like I said, I'm using the flat large. It's just the perfect size for these legs. And I didn't tape off my little feet here. Can you see my little feet um, on my piece of little gold toes? I didn't tape them off. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go through and use some either gold leaf or gilding wax or something gold on those. So I'm just, I just left them. Um, but we are doing an ombre blend of palmetto to antebellum blue. So palmetto, antebellum blue, and it breaks, the fade breaks right in here. I don't know if you can see that, but right where my finger is, that's about where our ombre starts to happen. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and start on this leg. Misting with my water, make my paint go a little bit longer and be open and workable for a little bit longer. So I'll see, I'll go ahead and paint this outside even though you can't see it quite yet. And the inside. I'm working in small sections at a time right now um, because I am going to be doing blending Every time I blend, I work in small sections. Um, that way the paint doesn't dry up on me as quickly so I can blend successfully and I don't have to waste paint. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my palmetto all the way up to right here where that antebellum blue starts. And we'll just do this side of the leg. Um, the inside of the leg. 
and the back of the leg, which it's very, it's, this is really kind of awkward and difficult. Um, I'm going to tilt this this way a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> so, mm, yeah, son of a gun. Okay, so this, the back of the leg, my hand and my brush don't really fit in that space very well, so it's a little awkward, but it's doable. Just uh, do the best you can, pounce. Maybe go at it from this side too. And make sure you get your coverage going on down in there. Give it a little misty mist. That will help. Okay, cool. So you can see the section of the leg that I've painted, just this section. I'm not gonna work in any bigger of a section than that because um, I'm blending. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my antebellum blue and I'm gonna work my way up the leg and stop at the top of the leg. And there's a hole in my floor that's about two and a half inches round and my stool keeps falling in the hole. So if it looks like I'm about to fall, it's because my wheel keeps getting caught in this hole. But um, no big deal, I have fallen off my stool on, on a video before, on a live video before. So if I can get over that without being too embarrassed, I can probably get over my wheel getting stuck in a two and a half inch hole in the floor. It's kind of cool. So this is, I'm in my um, workshop right now, um, my studio, not my home studio, my actual real in my store studio, and it used to be a beauty salon. So there's two and a half, three inch holes randomly all over the floor, a little scary. Um, the feet of my furniture always get stuck in said holes, that's fun. And at night, when the lights are on in the basement, it looks kind of like um, a starry sky, I guess. It, you can see all the light shining out from the floor. So I guess that's kind of cool. All right, so getting all angles of our, our, the top of our leg here with the antebellum blue. Um, I know the colors are kind of similar, so you might not. Can you see where they meet right here on my video? Here. There you go. See where the colors meet? That's where we're gonna be blendy blend, blendy blending our colors together. So I'm gonna just make sure I give that a mist of water to keep my colors wet so that I can do my blend while I get the rest of this leg here. Okay, so there we go. All right, so got my palmetto up to here, my antebellum blue to here. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab one of my bell brushes and I'm just gonna kind of gently, where the colors meet, blend those together back and forth. I can move up a little bit to bring my fade up and I can move down a little bit to bring my fade down. Um, basically what's happening is um, when I do that, I'm mixing the blue and the green together gradually. And that's how you get an ombre fade. So I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of the leg. You can't really see it, but I'm doing the same thing. Just trust me. Um, <clears throat> if your paint starts to dry up on you while you're blending, you can either mist it with water again or just add a little bit more paint. No big deal. And then just continue your blendy blend. Okay, see how they are, um, it's blending together, that fade, they just kind of, you know, feather off and blend together. That's an ombre fade in case you have not done it before. So while this area is wet, oh, I gotta get the inside real quick. Gotta blendy blend the inside and not get caught up in my cord here. Okay, so it's a little bit harder to see, but just trust me, I'm doing the same thing. Blendy blend. And then right here on the inside of the leg, same thing. You just kind of where the colors meet, go back and forth and bring a little bit of the green into the blue and a little bit of blue into the green. And that is 
essentially um, how a blend works. You just marrying the colors just a little bit. Whoa, whoa. Um, if, if somebody asked me the other day, um, how do you get rid of the hard line? So say you blend it just like we just did and um, you can still see a hard line from like your first coat or, or it dried too fast and you see the hard line. Just do what I just did, add a little bit more of your top color, a little bit more of your bottom color, okay? And just blend them right where they meet, just like we did the first time around. And no more hard line. Easy peasy. Okay, so while that's a little bit wet, not all the way dry, we're going to go ahead and grab our um, the Gulf. So remember, our the Gulf is this um, really pretty um, beachy Tiffany blue kind of color. Um, we're going to grab that and dip our brush, and then kind of you know. But we're going to scrape the excess off on the side of the jar. We don't, we don't need to totally load it up, okay? And I want to accentuate this pretty little round part of the leg here. So I'm just going to kind of come like this. Swoop. Remember when you ask yourself, so where am I supposed to put these accent colors? You want to find a characteristic of your piece that you would like to accentuate, something that makes it interesting or unique which I feel like this little you know curve the curves on the legs make it make it different you know so we want to celebrate that we're celebrating what is different about our piece and unique okay so on these here legs I think it's kind of neat that they kind of splay out like this so I'm just going to kind of um, kind of follow let's see I'm just going to kind of follow, follow it like this. Um, I'm not going to go all the way down, but I'm going to kind of come down part way down the fluting there. See how on each flute I, I stopped at a different point. So this one is here, this one's here, this one's here. I'm just staggering it so it doesn't look like I just went whoop. Okay. And that's probably good. So I'm going to go ahead and um, grab my bell brush that I'm blending with. And I'm just going to follow that color where the line, where the colors meet. Follow that, um, follow the swoop, follow the curve. Just a couple times until the colors just kind of naturally start blending together, okay? Doesn't require any fancy motions, just a little bit of following the curve see that's why I wipe my brush off of the extra paint because see that little goober there that's not supposed to be there but I'm just gonna wipe my brush off and I'm just gonna blend it in blend it out blend it out when in doubt okay okay so now I'm gonna move on down here and I'm just gonna kind of trace my motions I'm just gonna follow where I put that Gulf and just blend it into the um, palmetto. Easy, real easy like, okay? If you get carried away and you're like, holy smokes, I put too much of the gulf on that leg, um, you can just take your palmetto and add a little bit more, just like that. And then blend it uh, where the colors meet. Just kind of, I can just dab at it on these flutes. You kind of got to get down in there, and the only really way to do that is kind of pouncing on those. So, just some little pouncy motions will blend those colors perfectly together. Okay, so um, I've got two more colors to show you on the legs, real quick, and then I'll hop off here. Um, next, we're going to do our um, kudzu. Kudzu's next. So <clears throat> let me grab my kudzu brush here and load it up a little bit. Oh, that might be a little, little bit of a lot. I think I got my brushes backwards, but it's okay. Okay, so remember follow the leader. 
We're just going to follow the leader with our kudzu. We're shadowing a little bit of where we put the, um, the gulf. Okay, follow the leader. And then same down here. We're just going to follow the leader. Okay, easy peasy. And then take our brush and just kind of blend that in the same way we did with the gulf. Just follow that line gently. Once, like some smooth little strokes back and forth. If you are doing this with your second color and you find that it's kind of taking away your first color and you're like, man, what happened to the gulf? Um, you just okay. It's okay. We we'll just go back and grab a little bit more of our golf and just kind of add a little bit more in. That's the great thing about paint is you can always add more. You can always paint over it if you hate it. Um, it's a little more difficult to take away, but all right. So we added in a little bit more of the golf. And then we're just going to kind of blend that in. Blend it out. Boom. Okay, so now we're just going to do these down here, our little dabbing motions to blend in our um, kudzu with the golf. And um, just like on the top, if it starts to kind of blend in too much and it just looks like all one big blob of color, um, I want a little bit of separation in my colors for this kind of blend. Um, because that's the fun part about it, is being able to tell that there's multiple colors added. So I'm um, just going to take my golf and add a little bit more in up here. Okay. And then I'll just blend that out into the kudzu. Gently. Make sure you're wiping off your brush of excess paint so you don't... Um, just keep going in circles, trying to blend out colors that got muddied. And you can do this with any kind of colors. You can do it with all grays. That would be cool. You could do it with all different shades of white. You could do it with um, contrasting colors like orange and purple. Um, you can get all, all kinds of different looks um, doing something like this. So, Okay, so now we're ready for our Florida orange, and then I will jump off here. So um, we're going to do something a little bit different than follow the leader on these legs, okay? So um, we're going to do something similar. Instead of, if we were following the leader, we would bring our Florida orange and come down here, which we still might do up here. But down here, I don't want to get too far down, down into the... Um, down here. So I'm going to kind of just take my Florida orange and I'm just going to kind of outline where my color, you know, from, from the top of where I started with my accent colors down just a little bit. So I'm not getting too crazy carried away. See, I'm only putting that much on there. And then I'll probably do the same thing here. Um, I'll probably just start at the top of where I started my little swoop and just kind of dab on a little bit of Florida orange at the top. Almost like a little apostrophe, almost like a little highlight on my curve here. Um, boom, 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 boom. And then we're going to blend that in. We'll start with this one. Blend it in gently. I just want a little tiny bit of the orange. I don't want it to be cray cray, you know what I mean? I just want a little bit. And I'm going to let that dry just a little bit more, and then I'm going to dab on a little bit more of the Florida orange, and then I'll be done with that. So I'll move over here and just kind of blend that in. <clears throat> and then um, the front I will treat separately. So um, I'm not really doing the front at this moment, but I'll do this a similar type thing. I'm going to take my Florida orange, and I'm going to just going to come down the front when I get to the front. So I want to, I'm going to dab on a little bit more Florida orange here. Blend that in just a little bit. 
and same with here. I'm going to dab on a little bit up here and just pounce to blend just a bit. I want to keep my orange. If you try to blend or pounce at it too much, it starts to mix together too much and you just get this mud color. So um, with contrasting colors like this, like you know, orange and green and colors that don't blend super well, you, you just kind of got to be careful that you don't stroke do you know do too many brush strokes or you just kind of get a muddy look you got to keep the colors a little separated separation of colors is your friend when you're working with opposite colors all right I'm gonna dab a little bit more orange here and then I'll bring in a little bit closer so you can see and then I'll I'll be done yakking your trap yakking my trap okay So I will just repeat that all over the legs and then a little bit on the top too. On the top, I'll just kind of come around these um, corners a little bit or these pillars a little bit, not too crazy. So I'll bring you in a little bit closer so you can see. So that back leg we haven't got to yet, but we've got to this front. So I got to do this front part, but we, um, that is the side, side view. And let's see. Make me put the brush down. I need to just stop playing. Okay, so that is our leg. And that is just how you kind of add in some bright colors to your um, background colors to create a kind of more interesting um, custom look with your blendy blend. Uh, hopefully you will try it and see what you think and use whatever colors you wish. Um, there's no rules about what colors this works with or not. So um, just try whatever. You never know. You could come up with something mind-blowing that nobody knows about. Um, that's the fun part about painting is that um, you can have a plan or you cannot have a plan. And um, if you fail, um, you're actually winning because you learn from that. So I will go through real quick, see if I see, see any quick questions. <clears throat> Um, Deb, no, I don't always use the same dry brush for blending. It, it, if the colors are super different, like if, you know, if they're red and green or white and black, I, I use different blending brushes. But these were similar enough that I can wipe them off and it doesn't, um, doesn't muddy up my colors. So, um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, I don't see too many other... I don't see any other questions. I'll go back and double check. <laughs> yes, I fell off my chair. Actually, my stool broke underneath me on a live. It wasn't my fault. I am clumsy, but not that clumsy. It broke. It wasn't my fault. So anyways, um, you all have a lovely evening, and I hope you all have a great week next week. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.